stuff's amazing. It's like some kind of titanium. Welcome back to the shop, gentlemen. And I'm super stoked. We got some mail here, some interesting stuff. What I really wanted to show you was uh, the stuff that my buddy Brad sent me from Tactical Keychains. Um, I sent him, we did a little horse trading. I sent him some legal tender. He sent me some stuff. So what we have here is he sent a chunk of uh, titanium. I've never had titanium. Uh, never handled it, never nothing with it, and it's uh, it's an amazing material. It's no bendy. It feels almost like aluminum, but it's way harder. Hey, check this out. This stuff's amazing. It's like some kind of titanium. We are going to use my recently developed graphite crucible and DC arc welder method for casting this titanium into something semi-useful. So before we get into the meat of the thing, head on over to Tactical Keychains and sign up to win uh, some swag. He's got a contest going on there because I like seeing somebody who's actually making a living making widgets in his garage with a CNC machine and he shows all his little mistakes and foibles and everyday stuff and it's awesome because you're not going to find that anywhere else. Now you may be asking yourself, Self, what is he gonna make? Well, I'll feed you baby birds. If you look at Brad's channel, you will note that he is having some problems with Chinese knockoffs, cheap Chinese knockoffs. So we are gonna beat the Chinese at their own game. We're gonna make a cheap Canadian knockoff of Brad's titanium stuff with Brad's own titanium. We're gonna make a craptacular bottle opener keychain. Holy, how do you cut this stuff? It's like some kind of titanium. Even the rusty beaver's having a hard time. Well, that's not warm at all. Like just at the very tip, but down here, cool as a cucumber. It's not very conductive at all. That might be trouble for the old arc furnace. I don't know much, but I know there ain't nobody trying to cast titanium in their garage. Not to brag or anything, but not even in a two car garage like I got. And the reason is because when you heat it up in the presence of oxygen, it boins and it don't stop boining until it's all gone or, <laughs> uh, or until it fizzles out. All right, I know you've been dying to see it. Here's the setup. We got the big beefy aluminum enclosure. Uh, let's see. If that's four inches, then that's gotta be about 24 inches deep give or take what's going to happen is we're going to have electrons come we're doing electron theory here we're going to have electrons come through the ground clamp into the enclosure through the protective bottom graphite plate through the crucible through the titanium into the copper clad gouging electrode this is graphite as well and we've switched to square because titanium and you might be wondering why the TIG torch. Well, the magic of this is we are going to coat this in a cushy blanket of argon. Argon, of course, is a noble gas, so the titanium will not burn. In theory, this is going to work because we don't have any wind in the shop and argon is heavier than air. So it's gonna make a nice little blanket. And if you've TIG welded for any amount of time, you know that you can get uh, shortness of breath and, and whatnot because the argon settles in your lungs in the bottom of your lungs and it's hard to clear it because it's heavier than air. All right, we're going full court press on the smafty. I got my welding gloves, I got my frayed car hearts, all cotton, my leather boots, and a well of safety glasses. I'm going to use safety glasses and my welding helmet. What we're going to do is we're going to go in here with the night packs. I'm going to do a dry run. Uh, best pliers ever from Germany. Oh yeah, and I'm also gonna wear a welding beanie. Lincoln or Miller. And the Miller one's kinda chintzy, just like the welders. I'm gonna go with Lincoln. Okay, so we got the pre-flow gas going. We got the DC arc welder, electrode positive, set to 100 amper stands. We got nothing flammable around. We got the fire extinguisher there and there. 
Got all my safety gear on. I got everything moved over to the right. I did the uh, dry run and I'm right handed. I needed to move it over. I got my dear sweet mother on speed dial. I think we're ready to give her a walk. Shield down. Right on. Bring the stack. Well, that ain't working too good. Well, my clamp was getting pretty hot there, so I don't know what to do. We got rid of the square gouging electrode, went back to the round one. I got it in the Bernard uh, Stinger, 400 amps, and welder set at 200 amps, just as high as she'll suffer, and the gas flow is 15 CFM. Okay, shield down. So I can see in there now, and I am melting the titanium away. Being a little more selective where I hit the arc. And we got a big glob of melted titanium. Nope, melting away. Melting away. Looks very glossy. Very grassy. Doesn't look good at all. Looks like we're getting some bubbling, some boiling now. And my stinger hand's getting quite hot. And it looks like the uh, carbide is burning, or graphite rather. Nope, nothing coming out. It's all oxide. Yeah, just a mess of dross in there. Well, that was a rousing success in that it was a complete and utter failure. So that's pretty much just a drossy mess there. Sorry boys, can't win them all. That's just a nasty bubbly mess there. I had to break the crucible there. It was useless with that crap in there anyway. So there's another 45 big ones down the drain. Week's wages, son of a diddly. I put that prill in the vise to try and section it. It just cracked in twain. And we have the answer about the gold in the crucible. Of course, I used that crucible before, so it couldn't have gold in it. That must be the copper cladding. And pockets of uh, gas and a sulfury looking oxide. Some weird going on there. Anyway, I feel like I'm getting nice with my edema, so. Keep your stick on the ice. Growing superpowers. Well, let me know what you think. I'm open to suggestions. I pretty much tried nothing, and I'm all out of ideas.